Good morning, all of you. Yesterday we derived the equation of slope deflection. I hope you all remember. Let me repeat it here. It is MAB is equal to MFAB plus 2EI by L within the bracket 2 times the slope at near end plus slope at far end minus 3 times delta by L. So, MFAB is MAB final end moment at any beam for the one end MFAB plus 2EI by L. So, I am repeating it 2 times the slope at the near end plus the far end slope theta B minus the effect of sinking of support or settlement, differential settlement, 3 times the delta by L, where delta is the relative displacement of support A with respect to B. On the same lines for the same beam at the other end, you will come to know what will be the equation now. It is fixed end moment MFBA corresponding to that end plus the equation remains same, only with little change of terms. Now the near end becomes B. So first term is 2 times of theta b plus the far end is theta a and the last term remains same the effect of sink. So, any moment at any end of a particular beam will have the components of the two slopes at the other ends plus this sinking or the settlement of the supports between a and b. So, these components we got it now. So, once you know this slope you can find out but whereas this particular component in the slope deflection equation the first term refers to the effect of load acting on that particular B. So, effect of load means it depends on the load pattern whether it is concentrated load, point load, combination of loads all those things. To know that first you should remember these equations set of equations I have written on the board already. The take the first case if the entire segment of the beam is loaded with uniformly distributed load of magnitude w kilo newton per meter then you have the fixed end moments it does not come like that you have to derive this but it is not in your syllabus. So, MFAB the left hand fixed end moment will be considered as negative and the right hand will be considered as positive. So, the load which is acting downwards always will be left negative right is positive here. So, MFAB refers to w that is the intensity of the UDL L square by 12 the same equation because it is symmetrically applied load plus W L square by 12. If you have a span with UDL you need to remember these two terms that is minus and plus W L square by 12. If you take a concentrated load it is placed unsymmetrically let the distance from left support is A and the right support is B again MFA be negative MFBA is positive on a span of L the load is equal to W and it will be equal to now again left is minus W the near distance from the support A to the point you can take this as C now where the load is applied. The distance is going to as A the remaining is B A plus B will be equal to L. So, then it will be minus W A B square by L square and the other side if it is right hand side W A square B by S. Remember these two terms the near end distance will be single and the other distance is square of the distance. So, A to C is A and C to B is B when you take left hand side it is B square by L square when you take right hand side it is A square by L square change is minus and plus. For the same case if A and B are equal means you will be placing the load exactly at the mid span. That you can get it directly if you substitute A equal to L by 2, B is equal to L by 2, you will get these two terms. It is simple term W L by 8 and plus W L by 8. When you consider a triangular load, uniformly varying load varies from 0 to a value of W kilo Newton per meter, then again left hand side the end moment MFAB is minus W L square by 30 and the right hand side where you have the maximum ordinate of the triangular load you have plus W L square by 20. You can reverse it if it is 0 here and maximum at the left hand side this becomes again minus W L square by 20 whereas this will be plus W L square by 30. So, it is only the change of terms. So, coming to the next condition. So, these are the generally expected loads in any question. UDL may be unsymmetrical point load 
and symmetrical point load and triangular load and in a beam you can combine UDL with a point load also then you have to add these two equations that we will take up the problems we will discuss that. So coming to the next these are all the special cases you may get it in some cases if a particular span is loaded with a couple of magnitude m. So if you take it in terms of kilo newton meter and the moment will be also in terms of kilo newton meter. So left hand side MFAB, right hand side MFBA, couple acting at a distance of A from A, small b from B. So MFAB will be equal to plus, so it will be reversing now because the moment is acting here on the other side generally it is negative but this one it will be equal to plus MB by L square 2A minus B, if it is near and from A it is 2A minus B and whereas MFBA is plus MA by L square 2B minus A. Since we are taking moment at A, it is 2A minus B. When you are taking the fixed end moment at B, it is 2B minus A and MA by L square, MB by L square. These are the change. So note this particular condition, both the values of the fixed end moments are positive because you have a clockwise moment acting on the B. When you have a triangular load, starts from 0 at both the ends and you have a maximum intensity W kilo Newton per meter at the mid span take this point as C, L by 2 and L by 2, the both the terms should be same because the load is symmetrical on the beam, then this 5 WL square by 96 plus 5 WL square by 96. Coming to another condition where you have two concentrated loads placed equally from left and as well as right. So whatever may be the distance in between, so left and right distance to the w load should be equal to same A and E with a span of E. The equation terms out to be same minus and plus W A into L minus A by L plus W A into L minus A by L. So this term if you don't remember that I can use this equation again W1 for this one W2 for the same condition you will get the same. Of course it is derived out of those two terms. Come to the next one when you have a partial UDL acting on the beam from one of the supports, assuming that it is from left side at a distance of A, the remaining is L minus A because span is L. So equation will be little lengthier here, minus WL square by 12. This what is this term WL square by 12? That is nothing but the total UDL. Now we are partial, we get an equation within the bracket 6 minus 8 A by L plus 3 A square by L square. Coming to the other end. W L cube by 12 L in the bracket 4 minus 3 A by L. I am taking last condition here, variable load, triangular load over half of the span but the magnet is at the one of the support left side 0 at this point where you have C. So maximum W kilo per meter, left and right, left side minus 23 W L square by 960 and right side 7 W L square by 960. All these terms will come for this first term of your slope deflection equation. Rest of them depends on the problem and the end condition whether it will be available or not. See if sinking is not there it will be equal to 0. If one of the end is fixed then the slope is also equal to 0. We have to reduce the equations and substitute to get the solutions using the equilibrium and as well as compatibility conditions. So we will go for the problems. A simple one and then the complicated. Okay. You can note down this problem. It is the analyze the continuous beam shown in figure below by slope deflection method. Sketch shear force diagram, bending moment diagram and elastic curve. Consider problem given EIS constant that means E and I remains for AB and BC same. You have two span continuous beam here ABC. You have a point load of 50 kilo Newton on AB at a distance of 3 meters from A and 2 meters from B. So it is an unsymmetrical load on this span. Coming to BC, I have 60 kilo Newton load exactly at mid span 2.5 and 2.5. Total span is 10 meters, 5 plus 5. So 60 kilo Newton, 2.5 from B and 2.5 from C. So please leave generally always below this beam more space to sketch your shear force, bending moment and as well as elastic curve. It will be convenient if you leave it as it is. At the end we can use this space to draw the required diagrams. So how many unknowns now? You can just unknown displacement 
there will be a rotation here theta a and there will be a rotation here also theta b and the rotation at theta c. So theta a, theta b, theta c are three unknowns now. So you cannot use just simple equilibrium conditions. We need to have additional condition like compatibility and others. So let me write two spans, two equations here for span a, b, n moment at a and n moment at b. Similarly, n moment at b and as well as n moment at c. So that means we are assuming each span as fixed beam. Assuming each span as fixed beam, we need to define the fixed beam moments first, find out the values, then use the slope reflection equation. So let me put it the general equation now. General slope deflection equation is, I'll put only one value, MAB is MFAB plus 2EI by L. 2 times of theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta by l particularly for this problem you don't get the last term because there is no sinking or settlement problem is clear a b c supports are at the same level even after the application of the load. So let me first step is to find fixed end moments. Here we have to assume each span separately as fixed beam and we have to calculate that is what is shown in the table. You can use the terms. The first one MFAB left hand side minus WAB square by L square is equal to minus 50 into 3 into 2 square divided by 5 square. So 50, A is 3 from distance to load from A and B is 2 meters. It is 15 to 3 into 2 square by L square. How much it is now? 4. 50 by 25, 2 into 3, 6. 6 4 is 24. It is 24 kilo Newton meter. So MF BA, because it is unsymmetrical, will have a different value. The same expression with little change. W A square B by L square plus 50 into 3 square into 2 divided by 5 square. So 25 into 50 into 9, 36 kilo Newton meter. So coming to span B, I can put only one term now MF BC is equal to minus MF CB because the load is symmetrical here. What is the equation? It is minus WL by 8 that is equal to minus 60 into L is 5 divided by 8. It is equal to 37.5 kilo Newton. The same you can get it using this equation also. You substitute this one. So W into 2.5 into 2.5 squared by L squared will be equal to the same answer. And the same term we will get for the other end also. So we got these fixed end moments. The next step is to develop the slope deflection equations. So I have a standard equation. In that delta is not considered because it is 0 here. So let me go to the next step. Slope deflection equations. How many you will get? Since you have two spans, you will get four slope deflection equations. MAB, you don't need to repeat the terms, have the equation, wherever the span AB means use AB here, span BC is BC like that. MFAB is a half value of minus 24 plus 2 into E into I, it is constant value, not given, you don't need it also. Divided by span, L is 5, multiplied by 2 times of theta A plus theta B, because in this case, first term is A, second term is B. Near end is A, far end is B. Take this equation as 2, the general equation as 1. Final end moment, MBA is equal to plus 36 MFBA, we have this value here, 
minus 2 EA by for the same span, so L is 5. These two will exchange. This, the suffix, whatever you have prefix here for theta A and theta B will exchange. Now this is theta A here plus 2 times of theta B. That will be your equation number 3. Moving to the next span, M B C will be equal to M F B C is minus 37.5 plus 2 E I by span is again 5 meters, 2 times of theta B plus theta C, take this as fourth one and M C B the last one because MFCB is also same 37.5 plus 2 EI by L theta B plus 2 times theta. You can observe in one span the terms within the bracket they exchange their prefix values. So we have developed the equations where the terms are all unknown theta A, theta B and theta c that we need to find out. Now how to find out now the first of all whatever the conditions available at the ends for this beam there are two ends a and b whereas support b is joint where beam is continuous it will be considered as a joint if it is far end a and far end c. So that will be third one now step in that one a end conditions. or technically we could say that as boundary condition. At A, now what is the condition available now? Look at the problem. So it is a simple support. So hinge support is considered a simple support. What is the condition for hinge support? This does not hold this pin to rotate. So, so it is easy to rotate that is why we have the value of slope theta. So that means the moment is 0. So you do not get any moment developed at the point of roller or hinge support or simple support. So the final end moment M A towards B should be equal to 0. So do not confuse I have written an equation here but we know the answer because of the boundary condition M A B equal to 0 using equation 2 now using equation 2 I can just simplify this now minus 24 plus I will open the bracket 2 into 2 4 divided by 8.8 EI theta A plus 2 by 5 is 0.4 EI theta B is equal to 0 or I can get an equation in the form of linear simultaneous 0.8, 0 0.4 EI theta B. If we transfer minus 24 to the right hand side, it will be plus 24, call this equation as 6. Again we have same type of condition at support C also. So it is a roller end, last support, again moment is equal to 0, what is the moment final at C, it is MCB is equal to 0. So take the various MCB now using equation 5. Using equation 5, I could get 37.5 plus 2 EI by 5 in the bracket 2 times theta B, sorry theta b plus 2 times theta c is equal to 0. If we just simplify this, it will be 0.4 ei theta b plus 0.8 ei theta c is equal to minus 37.5 because you have plus there. So, it will become minus. So, you have got two equations now, but there are three nodes theta a, theta b and theta c. I need to get one more equation to solve this problem. 
So that will come from the condition that at the joint. When you say conditions here, there are end conditions and joint conditions. So you have a joint B where AB and BC are meeting. So it is third point B joint condition that we call it as compatibility condition. That means one portion of the joint left to the right should be compatible with the same. So that will be at B to satisfy that the end moment at B towards left should be equal to the end moment to the right side. Only thing is the opposite symbol. The best condition what we get it is MBA plus MBC is equal to zero. So that's what the joint equilibrium condition or you can say compatibility that slope towards left side theta BA is exactly equal to towards the right side theta BC. So you have the expression for MBA and MBC from equation 3 and 4. Adding 3 and 4, adding 3 and 4, we get an equation. 36 plus 0.4 EI theta A because you have theta A into 2 by 5 and 0.8 EI theta B, 2 times of 2 by L minus equation number 4, 37.5 plus 0.8 EI theta B plus 0.4 EI theta C is equal to 0. MBA plus MBC equal to 0. If we just simplify now, I have only one term of 0.4 theta A, 0.4 EI theta A, I have two terms with point B, no, theta B, 0.8 EI and 0.8, it will be equal to 1.6 EI theta B and only one term of theta C, 0.4 EI theta C, that is equal to, I have 36 minus 37.5, the difference is 1.5. If you transfer to the right hand side, it is minus becomes plus 1.5. Take this equation as so finally we have reduced the solution to linear simultaneous sequence. Now it is mathematics. So nothing structural now. Using the available conditions, boundary and the end conditions, we could reduce the equations now. MAB equal to 0, MCB equal to 0 and MBA plus MBC equal to 0. We used all these 2, 3, 4 and 5. So solving these equations now. Solving equations 6, 7, 8 and 8. Since it is only 3 equations linear, you can easily get the solution just by using your calculators. The answer is EI theta A 26.5625 EI theta B is 6.875 and EI theta C is minus 50.3125. So solving these three linear simultaneous equations, you could get the final answers of theta A, theta B and theta C. So two are positive, one is negative, it represents the clockwise or anticlockwise rotation of the particular joints. So substitute back these three values of theta A, theta B and theta C in equations 2 to 5, we will get the final end moments. Substituting in equations 2 to 5, we get final moments. from equation 2, I am writing all the steps, so MAB is, you have minus 24 plus 
2 by 5 because EI is there already within this answer now. I am taking 2 times of theta A is 26.5625 plus theta B is 6.875. I use the all the digits of the answer you will get exactly 0 because we started from that condition that it is a simple end the condition is MAB equal to 0. So coming to MBA now that is from equation 3 plus 36 plus 2 EI by L 2 by 5 it is EI theta A it is 26.5. 5625 plus 2 times 6.875 that is equal to 52.125 the magnitude unit is kilo newton meter. From equation 4 MBC it is minus 37.5 plus 2 EI by L is 2 by 5, 2 times of theta B, 2 into 6.875 minus theta C is 50.3125, the answer is minus 52.125, you should get the same because we use this condition MBA plus MBC equal to 0. And from equation 5, your MCB equal to plus 37.5 plus 2 by 5 6.875 minus 2 times 50.3125 should be again equal to 0. We use the condition MAB and MCB equal to 0 and these two equations added 3 and 4. You can see here MBA plus MBC equal to 0. The final answer will be equal to 0. If you have some rounding off errors, you may get a minor values that you can neglect. It should be always equal to 0. So we got these final moments. Let me transfer them on to the beam. I will put it here. MAB is 0, arrow with an end 0 here. Whereas MBA is clockwise and MBC is anticlockwise, the value is 52.125 and MCB is 0. So this is a pictorial view here now, I want to transfer them. So on the free body diagram you will get these n moments, use these n moments to find out the reaction and the moments wherever it is required. Now to sketch the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we need to use the free body diagrams of the individual spans. Let me take up the free body diagram of AB. Free body diagram of AB span. I have taken the two reactions at the supports RA and RB. Because at B, you will get the 
participation of both the adjacent spans BA and BC. You have a contribution from BA towards reaction at B. You will have a contribution of reaction from the next segment BC also. A portion, the portion of the partial value of the reaction RBA. And similarly, you get RBC, total reaction will be acting at B. So, to find out these reactions now, I will go back to the basic steps. Sigma of MA equal to 0, treating positive for clockwise moments. For this free body diagram, I have 15 to 3 plus 52.125 minus RBA into 5 is equal to 0. 50 is a concentrated load, arm distance is 3, so 50 into 3, 150 plus 52.125 is the moment. So it is total 202.125 divided by 5. So it is RBA equal to 40.425 it is kilo newton acting upwards. To get the other reaction I can use the again the equilibrium equation sigma Fy equal to 0 same sign convention what we used earlier positive for upwards. So we have Ra plus Rb minus 50 is equal to 0. Therefore, R will be equal to 50 minus of 40.425, it is 9.575 kilo Newton. Again, this one is also acting upwards. You can put it here 9.575 kilo Newton, 40.425 kilo Newton. Using these two values and the applied load, I could sketch this shear force diagram, you have ordinate here it is 9.575 moves in the upward direction and no load between A and D it is constant, suddenly you have 50 kN coming downwards 9.575 positive minus 50 it comes to 40.425 kN that is what we have the reaction at B it is 40.425. You can observe now the shear force diagram here it is changing its sign at point D. So, what is the importance of this point now? Where shear force changes at a particular point, we know that the bending moment will be maximum. So, at D, we get maximum bending moment because the shear force is changing its sign. So, let me find out point D is clearly known now, I can take left side or right side, you will get the same value. So, since I will take the left side here, I have only one load, 9.575 left hand side acting upwards, it creates positive bending moment clockwise into distance is 3. So, MD is equal to 28.725. Similarly, let me take the other segment also, we have one more segment BC, free body diagram of BC. So, just taken out that segment BC written as a free body diagram, remove the supports represented by possible moments and reaction at B. I already told when you took this RBA, you have some more component towards reaction comes from this side RBC and final value at C RC. Same condition now to find out the reaction, 
sigma of m b equal to 0 treat positive for clockwise moments 60 into 2.5 minus r c into 5 minus 52.125 is equal to 16 to 2.5 is the moment due to concentrated load we have a couple 52.125 and the reaction rc the total reaction is 19.575 the reaction here 19.575 kilo newton of course it is acting upwards what is assumed is correct so use the other equilibrium sigma of fy equal to 0 treat positive for upward forces partial reaction at b r b c plus r c minus 60 equal to 0 therefore your r b c is equal to it is 40.425 so we got both the reactions now we will transfer it onto the figure it is 40.425 kilo newton it is 19.575 kilo newton use these reactions and the applied load let me draw the shear force diagram simple we have moving upwards here 40.425 remains constant at 40.425 suddenly at e we have 60 kilo newton 40.425 minus 60 is 9.575 kilo newton and i have a reaction 19 sorry not 9 19.575 and the reaction is same 19.575 again here also you can observe that your shear force is changing its sign from positive to negative at particular point e. so that is the point of importance we need to find the bending moment at e it will be always maximum m e either you can take right side or left side i will take right side only one load into distance 19.575 into 2.5 only one load acting anti clockwise to the right side is positive moment so the value is 48.037 let me transfer these reactions onto this free body diagram of the continuous beam now have a reaction at A that is fully RA. The RA is 9.575. I have components of reaction at B. Both the values are 40.425 kilo Newton RBA and as well as RBC, whereas RC is 19.575. The two individual shear force diagrams will be the shear force diagram for beam also. So just combine them, put it on one stretch, take a reference line, 9.575 constant comes down to 40.425 minus and again it is 40.425 to positive 40.425 constant comes down to 19 negative and constant 19.575 it is 40.425 40.425 positive negative positive just to distinguish the two diagrams here force and bending moment we need to hatch them along the boundary for shear force and for full for bending moment diagram. So we got the shear force diagram for the continuous beam you can observe the same figures I have written here for AB and as well as BC have transferred here. So it becomes the shear force diagram for the continuous beam. So this is very important we need to have these values while designing the beam we need to use these values for the design of shear reinforcement at the ends of the beams. So let me take the bending moment now. I have all the values of the bending moments. The end moment is 0, 
52.125 and 0 and I have at D plus 28 and plus 48.037. So let me use it here again. I have taken a reference line. I will just mark the values now, 0 here, first the end moments whatever on the beam. So please note this point to sketch this on the tension side, take the arrows downwards means you have a value of 52.125 below the reference line and again 0 at C. I have the values at D and E, so generally it will be positive always except if the loads are in the different directions. Now it is 28.725 kilo Newton meter and I have at E 48.037. So starting from A it will first point we will get D since there is no load on the beam the variation of bending moment is linear it goes from 0 to 28 from 28 to minus 52.125 from minus 52 to 48.037 at E and again from 48 it goes back to 0. So it means now you have positive diagram from A beyond D between D and B and minus this one we have negative near support B left hand as well as right and again positive for the rest of the portion from a point between B and E to C. So you can observe now zero bending moment at the ends and at two points the bending moment is changing its side. What is the indication now? The bending moment changing its sign means at that point the flexural change will be there in the elastic curve that means instantaneously the moment change from positive to negative or negative to positive that particular point is referred as that you already known from your strength of materials it is called as point of contra flexure or point of inflection where the curvature changes the deformation of the beam that you would have done in the free body diagram itself. Let me use the free body diagram itself. Take this point as P1. We know that assume the point of contraflexion at a distance of x from support B. M P1 towards right side should be equal to 0. It is 40.425 into x minus 52.125 is equal to 0. So from this I can get the value of x. x is 52.125 divided by 40.425. 1.28 meters. On the same lines I can put a, another point of contraflexure between B and E. Let me take this as P2 at a distance x from B towards right side. So bending moment at P2 is equal to 0. M P2 let me take it left side that is equal to 40 point 425 into x minus 52.125 is equal to 0 therefore x is 1.28 meters. I will use these values. It may not be required to sketch the elastic curve but to know that how to find the point of contraflexure distance I have done it. That's why I told you leave sufficient space below the beam so that we can able to sketch the bending moment. Sorry, shear force, downcome, bending moment diagram and elastic curve. 
have supports A, B and C. At equidistance from B, 1.28 and 1.28 meters, you have point of control flexors. This is what we get the elastic curve. The deformed shape of the beam after the application of load we call that as an elastic curve or deformed shape that can be drawn by using the bending moment diagram. You can observe now from A to the P1 you have positive bending moment here, see the curvature here. It is a sagging bending moment. Between P1 and P2 we have negative, you can see the curvature upwards where you have hogging bending moment. Again from P2 to C it is positive bending moment that is a sagging bending moment curvature downwards. So these are the steps involved in the slope deflection method. Develop the equations using the slope deflection general equation and use the boundary conditions and joint conditions to get the required linear simultaneous equations, solve them, substitute back into the slope deflection equations, you will get the moments, use the moments and the free body diagram of the segments, calculate the reactions, use them to find the bending moment at required points maximum and of course finally you can sketch the elastic curve. Let me take the other problem in the next class with all the combination of loads and all the probable support conditions. Thank you.